Greetings. Hi, it's me, Dr. Paul Gerhardt, and today we're talking about resistance to change. Why do people resist change so much? Uh, if you've been working at any job for any amount of time, undoubtedly you've probably seen things change, and if you continue to work there, you're probably going to see a lot more change. We're in an ever-changing environment, and, and the organizations that do not change or have employees that are holding them back because they're not moving forward with proposed changes, those are the organizations that become weaker and weaker. We're now in a global environment where organizations are struggling to make sure that they have people with the right kinds of talents doing the right kinds of work, keeping the organization staying competitive. Likewise, we're being competitive to maintain our clientele, happy customers whose needs are understood and are being met are the ones that continue to grow. But when employees are failing to move initiatives forward in their organizations by not doing what they're supposed to be doing as it relates to creating positive change, that's when you become a proverbial wrench in the wheels of progress. So any employee that doesn't understand how important moving forward in doing their part in the organizational change is hampering success of the organization and therefore becomes a liability to the organization. And people are should not be seen as things. A liability is a thing. But people should feel like uh, they have some bit of a say in the change and leaders need to understand the things that might be holding back or people from people doing things that could be holding them them back and making the change happen and so many times it's directly related to values values are directly related to attitudes and attitudes are directly related to uh, action or our behaviors so I'll say that again. Our values, our belief systems, our character, that affects our attitudes. Our attitudes affect whether or not we do something or do something well or don't do something. No, I refuse to do that. Or I'm going to slow down and do that because I don't feel right about that. You know, I have a negative attitude that's affecting my behaviors. It's slowing my actions down. And that's a really important for uh, leaders to understand. We're human. Each of us has values and leaders need to look into what individuals values are in order to help come up with answers to make sure people's attitudes are positive so that they take the necessary actions that help them accomplish the organization's goals as it relates to making that change. So a few of the the things related to values are the fact that people are sometimes just creatures of habit. They like the old ways of doing things. They're used to doing things that way. Uh, sometimes it's about work ethic. Uh, changes create more work for other people. And so you've got to, in order to tackle that one, you've got to really understand what motivates people to do good work? Are, are the expectations very clear? When there's a performance issue, it's either related to ability, it's related to resources, or it's related to motivation. If you want to motivate people, you have to understand what it is that motivates each person. So um, there's sometimes there's a ripple effect that, that can take place. And so when people see how they fit into the bigger scheme of things, it may change a lot of different things that, that go on in the workplace. And so those things need to be addressed by the leaders that are involved. Um, you know, sometimes uh, organizations make so much change that it feels like a flavor of the day. When did we stop doing that? I don't remember. I was just doing this the way that I've always done it. Wow, we changed doing that several times. So we haven't done that since 1984, you know, whatever those conversations are. So sometimes people see changes that don't really matter. And so 
uh, or leaders really need to make sure that if they're going to make change, they really have to think through these and make sure they're following up to make sure everybody's on board with the change. Of course, as we, we continue to talk about, people need to be involved in the change-making process so that leaders can understand how the change will affect people and systems. And so people need to feel like they are a part of the change and that they have some say, at least that they're heard. Uh, nobody needs to agree with any or anybody, but leaders, it really is in a leader's best interest to really hear from internal stakeholders uh, how that change may, may affect people and systems and be able to come up with answers and put real things in place that can make that change meaningful and useful. And people need to understand the real reason for uh, the change. Sometimes people fear change and resist change because of competence. Maybe they don't have the trainer. Maybe they're just barely keeping their head above water doing what they're doing and it, they, they need more training in order to do it. Training really, if it's done right, can be the solution to so many uh, problems. Sometimes it has to do with uh, family. and Changes might change the, the hours a person uh, has to work, show up to work and, and do his or her job. Uh, sometimes it means relocating or letting go of some employees. And that's hard. Uh, the social aspects of change are the hardest things for our employees to deal with. So we've got to, people, organizations really need to, to remember that uh, they're healthier when their people are healthier and they feel like their people feel like they're supported they're not surprised by things they're involved and really listened to and uh, change needs to be thought out forward backwards and all the necessary stakeholders need to be taken into consideration so people's values really need to be understood and doing so their attitudes can be affected either positively or negatively. If, if employees feel like they're understood and leaders can address those to, to keep the attitudes positive, then the behaviors will take place where people will want to take the necessary action to do a good job because they'll understand the meaning behind it and they'll understand how their actions could negatively or positively affect the organization. Well, I'll look forward to hearing from you on why people resist change, what values are involved, and uh, thanks so much for watching. This is uh, Dr. Paul Gerhardt, signing off.